you know, it's 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 just one of those things for guys like Kenny and Adrian and Jake that when you're on the, the front end of of a new coach taking over and you're in your junior and senior year and there's been some lean years before the new coach got here and you're a part of that rebuilding phase, I'm more than thankful that those guys gave me a chance to coach them and help me in these first two years establish the foundation, how hard, how tough, how much fight they were on the show regardless of record, regardless of scoring the game. Um, but like kids who stay like that, they typically don't get to reap the rewards when we get this thing turned and we're at the top of this league. So I'm proud of these guys, proud of the way they fought, and proud that they went out with a win on their senior day and showed this crowd that they're winners. You guys were up by 15, and then they went on a 10-1 run, kind of like it's been all season. It was kind of one of those stuff during that run where you kind of go, oh, no, here, here we go again. We ain't uh, I mean, maybe in my own mind but I just kept telling these guys to stay persistent. I mean, it, it, it more than anything, yeah, we they went on the run, but it was part of our drought. But more than anything, we're going to have the drought. We're, we're just not that offensive team that can be for 40 minutes against good teams like LSU. But what happens to us is we let down off defensively when we get up 10, 12, 15, whatever the case may be, and that's what happened today. We just got lax, and we give up a two threes in transition. We give up a, a layup um, right there that, that was that contributed in that 10-1 run, but, you know, used a couple timeouts and just told those guys, well, we got to get back to staying persistent and guard, regardless if if we make shots or not, and make shots or not, and, and more than anything, probably the way these guys made free throws down the stretch. Can you talk a little bit more about that, just what, you know, how they were able to shoot well from the free throw line? Yeah, we've, we've shot in free throws well since we've gotten to conference play. And, um, you know, we work on them all the time, and the guys, were especially at home, you know, you're going to be a little more confident at home. The guys stepped up to the line and make them, made them so proud of them. Tony, the job you guys did to open the second half, 11-2 run, especially Frankie Silva. Really good. I just told the guys to be aggressive. Be aggressive. We, you know, when you have that kind of lead, you want to come out and establish, create a little separation in those first four or five minutes. And... Uh, and we were able to do that. And I told I told Frankie, but I also told those seniors, be aggressive in these first four or five minutes. Run our stuff, but at the end of the day, LSU's a good off defensive team. So what I call hooping, you just got to go hoop. And Frankie hooped there in those first four or five minutes. He just went and made basketball plays off of the plays and actions that we were running. He didn't play, I want to say, right at the end of the first half. Maybe you sat him down for a little while. I think he had two fouls, didn't he? Okay. Frankie? But yeah, I think he does that make a difference being able to sit a little bit and then have halftime and kind of go in full speed? Or is that not? Really uh, I'd rather have him on the floor for four uh, minutes if, if, if I right. could. If I could. But he had those two fouls, and I was trying to do as much offense and defense with him uh, there at the end of the second half. Tony, a little bit. Talk about that defense, though. After you guys gave up that run, I mean, you held them, I think, 30% in the second half down the stretch. They didn't have many field goals, if any. Yeah. The we, defense stepped up. Yeah, we did. After that, that little stretch, you know, I got a little aggressive there in the timeout and uh, just said, we got to get back to guard. And, and the guys did that, so probably the way they responded. Of the three or four possible first round opponents, they're all teams that you've beaten or nearly beaten. Who is that? Do you, do you uh, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, LSU, or is Arkansas still in there? Yeah, Arkansas, 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 Arkansas still in that mix. Yeah, you know what? You know, we talk about the season being three phases. Just finished the second phase. You got the non conference, which is one phase. You got conference play, which is phase two. And now, phase three, no matter what you did all year long, no matter the type of team you were, um, in that third phase, it's records throw them out the window. And anything can happen, and crazier things have happened, and we've seen that in every league, and we've seen it in this league, you know, as recently as Georgia, whatever that year that was a few years ago. So the thing that I know about my team is that we're going to go to New Orleans with a lot of confidence. We talked about getting a little momentum, and we've been playing well, but we needed that win to really feel good about ourselves going in. And what this team has proven all year long is that maybe we haven't in this league, we haven't gotten over the hump in beating, beating a lot of people, but we've played well against everybody in this league. And so we're going to go, in, we're going to go into the conference tournament no matter what the matchup, thinking that we're going to go in there and try to, try to win the whole thing, but it just starts with that first one. Is it important to get a fifth SEC win and say, hey, we made progress from the year before? We, does that matter? More so for the fans. More so for the fans, you know, and to, to let them know things are moving in a positive direction. You know, we had clipped the last season's win total. Um, we eclipsed last season's conference win total. 
But nobody's going to be more disappointed or frustrated than I am because, you know, I want to win every game and, and, and I want the success. I'm, I'm impatient like all coaches are. But at the same time, like I said from day one, there is a patience and a perspective that, that we all have to have, including me, including our fans, knowing where I started with this program, where it was, there's going to it's going to, there's a lot of growth that still has to take place. And when you're trying to grow, comes there's growing pains. And that's what you see happening. We couldn't, a team like ours can't sustain the type of injuries that we've had all year long to potential starters. I mean, you look on the bench today, we have three potential starters in street clubs today, and all based all off of injury. And so, you know, we're not there yet where we can, we don't have the depth, we don't have the overall talent level, we're going to be able to sustain those type of injuries to three potential starters. So we're just going to keep growing it. There's no quick fixes. There's no um, overnight remedies. This is a process, and we're in the middle of it, and we're Everybody enjoys that destination, but you better enjoy the journey. And that's what we're going through now. And the best thing about it is I've done it before at UTEP and understand that. And so I might be a little more patient than, uh, than some other guys.